So I've got quite an interesting video today on a diaphragmatic repair done via robotic surgery on a man who was stabbed in his left chest. We've got a CT scan here and on this nice view you can see the defect. He's got the greater momentum poking through his left hemiphorax. So this operation was done by Mr Ian Paul, one of the thoracic surgeons at James Cook University Hospital and I'm James, I'm a final year medical student. And this is the inside view of the chest. We didn't get any outside video, sadly, because I wasn't there. However, someone nicely recorded the inside. We are using a three-port approach. One port on the left, one port on the right, and a port through the middle, holding this camera. We're using a DaVinci XI robot. It's brand new. James Cook have just bought it. It costs about a million and a half pounds, and each of these cases costs between one and 15,000 pounds. It's the same for the lung cancer operations as well. So that's just a 5mm trumpet sucker going in there to kind of clear up the area. So basically the way this works is there's three ports, ports 1 and 3 use Cadier forceps which you'll see come in later on and port 2 uses an 8mm camera in order to visualise the inside of the thorax. This operation is done using CO2 which is blown into the thorax and what that helps do is it pushes down on the diaphragm and really nicely exposes the edges of the wound which we'll have to kind of dissect open later with the Cadier forceps. It's CO2 blown in at 8 millimetres of mercury and 8 litres of flow a minute and uh, using the dual action of kind of blowing the diaphragm down and then picking up the edges of the wound with the Cadier forceps we can very nicely kind of slot the greater momentum back through into the abdomen. So what you can see in this video which we've kind of sped up here. On the left is the diaphragm and in the right, you can see it beating very quickly, is uh, the pericardium in the heart. Uh, the assistant is just putting in there some cigar swabs, uh, swabs that the scrub nurse has rolled up and put wraps around. And the reason these are very useful is unlike the trumpet sucker, this does not deflate the uh, diaphragm. Um, using the trumpet sucker gets a lot of the CO2 out of the thorax and these little cigar swabs help just dab up all of the blood that hasn't been sucked out initially and there shouldn't be any more major bleeding in this operation anyway so these are adequate. So from this patient's history he was stabbed 72 hours prior to this operation. He was at a party and uh, obviously got into an argument with a disgruntled guest and the guest decided to stab him um, leaving this very nice unilateral wound. Just a couple of things of interest if on a CT scan you manage to see blood or fluid in two separate compartments such as the thorax and the abdomen uh, that almost already diagnoses a uh, diaphragm injury. Typically with injuries like this because it's a penetrating trauma you get very nice quality diaphragm to suture up at the end. This would be very different if it was say a car crash or some kind of blunt trauma to the chest which usually leaves quite tatty and fried diaphragm in order to suture up. And so what the surgeon's doing now is he's just using the cardio forceps to kind of find the, the anterior and medial aspects of the wound and just dab away some of the blood. This person, like I said, because it was 72 hours um, post-injury, he's got some gentle adhesions which are formed, which are okay, and the cardio forceps kind of melt through the adhesions, whereas if you waited up to two to six weeks with these patients, they'd have a much more fibrous adhesions and this would be a much more complicated operation when it doesn't need to be. Another thing which is quite important in these kind of operations is identifying if there's any bowel in the uh, thorax which has popped up through the abdomen. Obviously the thorax is a negative pressure environment and the abdomen is positive pressure so naturally the greater momentum and bowel tends to pop through. On the CT scan it didn't really look like there was much bowel poking through and there might be just a tiny bit you'll see later on in the video of a nice pinkish bowel but it looked all nice and healthy and not incarcerated at all so it was deemed to be fine. Just of note any kind of stab wound between ribs 7 and 12 should be investigated by video assisted thoracic surgery even if you don't see any bowel loops on the scan because there's a high instance of injury in the concern over late diaphragmatic hernia. The surgeon now is just kind of poking through the medial aspect of the wound and it's coming close to the end of this portion of the operation you'll be able to see the greater momentum just fall back into the abdomen very nicely.
So the surgery with the cardiac is just nicely lifting up the diaphragm and the positive pressure caused by the CO2 and the thorax just very nicely helps in the greater momentum. What you'll soon be able to see through the little hole there is the upper border of the spleen, which doesn't look like it's got any lacerations on, which is always a good sign. So the surgeon's just kind of having a look around, seeing how he's going to suture this up. Like I said, because it was a stab and injury, it was penetrating trauma, the diaphragm is very nice to stitch. So in this, I, I sped up the video, but it, what we're going to do is we're going to take out the Cadia forcep and arm three, which is on the right here. And instead we're going to place in an instrument needle holder in order to do the suturing. And the sutures we're going to be doing are interrupted horizontal mattress sutures. These are the more preferred way of suturing in these type of injuries because if you do it uninterrupted and then one of your stitches goes loose you'll have to reopen them and re-suture the diaphragm. These sutures are cut down to about 15 centimeters by the scrub nurse so it's a bit easier to tie. Um, if you didn't have a massive robot an alternative would be having your assistant do the knot tie from the outside and the sutures are being cut by the assistant in this one and it saves using robotic scissors which cost about £200. You can actually use a suture cut needle holder which intuitive make which has scissors a bit more proximal to where the needle's held but that wasn't available on the day so we just decided to do instrumental ties. If the quality of the diaphragm was a bit worse on this we'd use pledgets to reinforce the wound. I haven't been stabbed myself but the patients do say that these kind of operations are quite sore and difficult to recover from because of post-operative pain so in order to help that along surgeons typically do a long line of intercostal blocks using bupivacaine 0.25% with adrenaline and it runs from ribs 1 to 12 and a phrenic nerve block is also put in obviously because the diaphragm is moving in and out with every breath. So this is just coming to the end of the suturing here and what we're going to do is we're going to just inspect the edges of the wound to make sure it all looks nice and tight together, tied together and then what will happen is someone will turn off the CO2 externally and the diaphragm will kind of suck back in towards the camera and if the stitches hold jobs are good and you can get out of the thorax. So this is a size 24 drain which is just going into the chest and um, there's no need for an inflation test on the lungs really because it's the lungs already been visualized and seen to be normal but I think we, we do a little one at the end here but there was no stab wounds on the lung and there wasn't any air leak visualized on the CT scan. Um, so in normal lung operations the drain is placed at the apex of the chest. Uh, in diaphragm surgery it's recommended that you place it at the bottom side of the chest where you've operated on but for some reason we didn't do it in this operation I don't know why um, so that is the drain on the apex of the lung there 
and then the Inevitus is very kindly inflating one side of the lung and we can see the alveoli popping up very nicely there. Job well done and we can suture him back up. This patient went on to ITU and then was discharged from a hospital after a five day stay.